Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Um, I kind of have a bit of a controversial topic. Um, I've been seeing a lot of comments on Twitter um, with the whole vaccine rollout. Um, by the way, right now we are at the end of March when I'm filming this, but a lot of these comments I had seen prior to vaccines becoming available for high risk um, chronically ill and disabled people, which I believe they became available as of March 15th. Um, but before that, I was seeing just a lot of um, anger about, you know, why um, chronically ill people had been left sort of last in line and, you know, just all of this um, sort of anger over, you know, our, our lives, our lives are also valuable, our lives are worthwhile. And, you know, you know, one of the biggest things that I think people had a very difficult time understanding was that we didn't have vaccines. We didn't have enough vaccines. That was our biggest issue. Um, the vaccine supply was, was, you know, non-existent basically. Um, and then the vaccines that we did have, we were prioritizing frontline workers and people that were, you know, out there, you know, in contact with a lot of other people. So to me, you know, I, I did feel that the vaccine rollout made sense given the fact that we didn't have a good vaccine supply. Obviously, now our vaccine supply is growing. We should be able to have um, vaccines almost widely available, I think, by the beginning of April. But I did see a lot of people in the disabled community just very angry and very upset. Um, if you saw my last video, I did speak about how um, I was not going to get the vaccine, at least for now. Um, and I did mention that a bit on Twitter that it may be wise for them to sort of hold back on making the vaccine avail available for people with certain high risk conditions, for example, autoimmune disorders and things like that. Um, but people were just still very angry. And, you know, I think some people find it as like a personal attack, especially when you've been disabled for such a long time and you've sort of felt um, victimized in a way by doctors, by, you know, just in general. But I don't think this was one of those things. I think it was just a lack of availability and you know now that more has become available now they are moving on to high risk people which i think is like third third tier um i i, I do understand where, where i get a little bit controversial i guess is that i yes there are disabled people don't are, are not less valuable or less worthy than a person who is fully able there is a difference, though, that many of us don't work because of our disabilities. Yes, there are a lot of disabled people that work. There are probably even disabled people that are frontline workers, and they would have qualified for a vaccine, you know, right at the beginning. But many of us don't work. Um, many of us are homebound. Many of us are not in contact with a lot of other people. So in a way, it does make sense that the, the vaccine wouldn't be available to us first. It would be available to those that are in contact with a lot of people every day or emergency workers, things like that, that older people who are, who have been, you know, dying in, at very, very high rates, you know, because of, of just being old. Um, so I, I get that. I, you know, I mentioned in my last video when I said that I was not going to get the vaccine at this time, that my decision was based on the fact that my quality of life is not great. Um, and the other thing is that I have no children and have no spouse. I, ha I don't have um, a job. I don't have all these responsibilities and these things that I would say, okay, I need to get the vaccine because I have kids to take care of. Yes, my life is not less valuable than that of another person, but I also have to look at, I have to look at, I have to face reality. Unfortunately, we do have to look at reality, especially when it comes to situations like these. I don't have all those other responsibilities. It's just me. And if something happens to me, it's just going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to anybody else. I'm not leaving behind kids. You know, they're not going to starve because I'm no longer working and able to provide for them. You know, I, I didn't have a job to begin with. So you do kind of, I, I do weigh those, those things. And I look at the big picture and say, well, I shouldn't really be a priority. 
Um, and I have no problem not being a priority. Am I more likely to die from getting COVID? Yeah, I'm probably more likely to die. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I can stay home um, and I can, you know, protect myself probably better than someone who works at a grocery store or um, is, you know, a paramedic or something. You know, it, it just... I do get it. I do get that we are at very high risk, but I, I, I also believe that we need to come at this from an, a place of understanding. Um, you know, also my, my quality of life, um, my quality of life is not that great. And, you know, getting sick with COVID, you know, not getting sick and, you know, continuing to live like this, you know, you just, I just weigh the you know, weigh those things. And I think to myself, you know, it's, it's like I said, I look at the big picture and it's like, well, it's not much of a huge difference to me. Um, and I think that's one thing when I did speak to my doctor, um, uh, one of my doctors, a specialist at UCLA, she sort of like was a little surprised that when she presented me with the two options of getting the vaccine and my condition possibly getting worse and not getting the vaccine and having multiple organ failure and dying, she said, which one sounds worse? And I said, they both don't sound great. And I think the mentality with a lot of doctors is if I keep you alive, I've done my job. And unfortunately, and I know that there are other chronically ill people that probably feel this way. I think there are two camps. There are chronically ill people that believe that no matter how horrible they feel, they still want to live. They still want to, you know, keep going. And a lot of those people have decent lives. They probably have happy families, you know, supportive families, a spouse. Some of them have kids. Like I mentioned in my last video, they have full lives, even if they can't, you know, even if they're incapacitated. There are some of us who are more able and more mobile, but we don't have all those other things. We don't have we don't have a good family life. You know, we don't have um, this huge network of friends and things like that that sort of keep you going. And so when when the doctor presented me with these options and I told her they both sound bad to me, they don't neither one sounds good. She kind of looked at me and she was like, OK, let me type it on a screen for you and show it to you. And I, I read it to myself and I said, they don't sound good to me. Um, and that's, and like I said, I know they're gonna be disabled people they are not gonna be happy with what I'm saying, but for some of us, you know, being alive and, and, and constantly going through this without support, without, without any real reason, you know, I I've, have felt a lot like that lately where, where it's like, what am I doing? You know, I'm gonna get the vaccine for what reason? To protect myself from from dying but if the vaccine makes me a little bit worse it's it might not be that that might also be even worse you know it's kind of like that saying there are there are worse things than death um and living incapacitated or having to completely depend on other people that are not dependable is not you know that doesn't sound like a good option for me um but I, I'm not saying that disabled people's lives aren't valuable. I just think that, unfortunately, because there weren't enough vaccines, you do have to prioritize. It is it is a very, very sad thing. It's kind of like a sinking ship. They prioritize women and children, you know, and the men are the last ones off the ship. It's not because their lives aren't as valuable. It's just because there's limited lifeboats. And I think that's where you know the, the government and the state is coming from is there's limited lifeboats and we can't give one to everybody and unfortunately that does result in loss of life um one thing that i did fail to mention in my last video and i kind of want to close on this um i i was speaking about you know my decision with the vaccination and um, i don't want people to think that it was like very easy for me to just say well i'm not going to get the vaccine um, my aunt passed away at the beginning of this month and it did put a lot of things um, into perspective because her and I are in a similar situation where we're mostly homebound and we're dependent on other people to basically take care of us and, um, you know, bring us our groceries, things like that. And unfortunately, um, she... 
I want to say like myself, does not have the network of support that um, that a, a sick person or a disabled person really needs. And unfortunately, um, she uh, someone was in contact with her. She didn't. She never left her house. And someone came in contact with her, um, one of her primary caregivers, and got her sick. Um, so. I don't take any of these things lightly. I'm not saying these things to make people angry. Um, you know, the, the vaccine decision was a difficult one for me because I know that my family is, you know, they're all getting vaccinated and I don't think anybody's going to hold back moving on and getting on with their lives simply because they have to protect me. And so it's, it's a tough decision in light of what has happened this month. But for me personally, you know, like I said, I don't believe that my life is less valuable, but I'm not, I hate to say it, I'm not going to lose much. And that, that it is a, it, it sounds horrible to say, but it is also reality. Um, as opposed to someone, like I said, that has children, that has a job, that has, um, you know, a spouse, you know, they need, they have a house or something that they have to pay for and they need both incomes. You know, those are the things that I, I do look at. And unfortunately, when it comes down to it, it's like I have to write a pro and con list and, you know, the pros don't outweigh the cons, uh, so to speak. And this is just what I've arrived at. Um, it is a bit of a controversial opinion because I do see a lot of disabled people getting very, very angry saying, you know, my life isn't worth less. And, and it's and nobody is saying that their life is worth less um, be, just because they don't have access to a vaccine. There just weren't enough vaccines to go around. But in my in my case, I do have that view where um, I have to look at the big I look at the big picture. I don't have to, but I do look at the big picture and I really, I, I don't want to sugarcoat anything when it comes to my reality. I think I'm one of those people that just, I, I, as painful as it is to live in reality sometimes, I, I want to be there. I would rather be there than live in a fantasy land where, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, that, I guess that's my own personal um, view. So that's where I'm at, um, and I, uh, I hope I don't offend anybody with my opinion. That's just my opinion, but those are just things that I that have been going through my mind lately, um, especially now that the vaccine has become available to myself. So anyways, that's all I've got for this video. I will be posting, I think, maybe uh, a few more um, in the upcoming weeks. So stay tuned for those. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and I'll see you again soon.